Hi, I've been boondocking in the southern Arizona desert for about five days and I thought I'd uh, make a quick video and, and show you guys what it means to boondock without uh, water or electricity uh, in the southern Arizona and how to make it work for five days. I'm just getting ready to go. You can see everything's a big mess because I've been here for five days on a hunting trip with my friends. So here's our campsite. We're just getting ready to pack up and get out of here. I've been here for six days and five nights boondocking. That's, uh, that's my hideout. And some of us use uh, pop-ups. Both great vehicles, great tra uh, trailers for, for camping, each with their own advantage. I'll give you a little panoramic here. You can see we're basically in the middle of nowhere. No electricity, no water. You gotta bring everything with you. And that's what deer hunting is about. When I bought this trailer, it had 12 volt battery. I changed it over to two 6 volt batteries and built this little housing for it. We got a little switch there for a, a backup camera and I got some uh, gauges on there to tell me what my solar panels are making and uh, what my charge controller is doing and how much uh, juice the batteries have and how much juice that the trailer is using. Just because you're boondocking doesn't mean that you have to uh, completely rough it. I bring my satellite dish and I set up a big TV on the side so that we can uh, watch the World Series and hockey in the evening. And I like to do it with uh, uh, the battery power at night. During the day the solar panels make enough for uh, running everything but then I don't get to charge my uh, batteries. I found that uh, I can run about three days, three nights, with uh, the batteries just by themselves. But again, uh, sometimes we have to rely on a generator. But I think that you can, uh, with very good conservation, get away without using the generator. And of course we like to have our uh, satellites so um, we can watch the hockey games and the World Series and football games. Sit around outside with the fire on our back. And that's kind of uh, why you want to have inverters so you can run these things. I'll show you some pictures of that too. So that's how I set up the TV for uh, watching the games with the guys in the evening. It's the TV I normally have on the inside. And it's just myself, I just like the small TV out here. But I can sit a lot closer. So these are solar panels that I bought. They generate about 80 watts a piece. And then these two I made. And I made these a long time ago. When it was uh, very expensive to buy solar panels. But unfortunately, you got some pretty bad breakage on them. On that one for sure, because we had a bad hailstorm. I'm gonna have to take this one apart and uh, see if it still works. It looks like right there might have a big problem, which would account for not getting um, a full charge. I am getting 12 volts down at the bottom still, but uh, normally when everything was perfect I would get about 15 on a regular basis. I'm mean, getting between 12 and 13 now, even with that broken one like that. One thing I noticed about uh, boondocking and relying on your batteries is that when you got your heater running, that thing is a power hog. 
it takes up a lot of power. One thing that I do in the morning is I get this stove going, making my coffee, and it's amazing, but this little stove will heat up the trailer super fast, so if you get your butt out of bed in the morning, start your coffee, then you don't have to run the heater and drain down those batteries. This is another power user, even in gas mode, it still has a little motor that circulates the uh, chemicals that make the uh, refrigerator cool. So one thing I do at night, and I like to do this at night because uh, it's cooler and because I don't have to listen to the uh, refrigerator run, is I'll turn it off and I'll take a big block of ice like that and stick it in the refrigerator. It keeps everything cool all night. And then in the morning, turn it back on and put that back in. It gets nice and frozen, saves a lot of energy. When you're boondocking in on batteries, this guy will drain your battery in a heartbeat. Best just to cook with gas, cook inside. I like to cook outside for most of my stuff, but uh, inside I'll cook my coffee and warm up soup and stuff like that. But this microwave is great when you're at a park or if you have a generator, but running on batteries, they don't like them so much. This is the TV that came with the trailer. It's a smaller TV. It's a nice TV HD. I usually put it outside, but everybody wanted to watch uh, the World Series on the bigger screen, so I have it in here. You notice I have that uh, DC plug there. When I'm not using the TV, I unplug it from the battery because uh, this TV will draw power even if it's not on. So another power saving idea, stretch your batteries out to last three or four days. So this is how I power everything. I've got this uh, inverter here. It's a 1100 watt inverter. Behind it, that's a grid tie inverter. So when I'm at home, I actually use the power from the solar panels and pump it back into my house. I don't know how much I save. Our kilowatt rate is 12 cents per kilowatt. And uh, that device back there was like $80 or something. So maybe I'll save $80 in a year. That would be good, huh?